Welcome to the Fashion and Color Show, where we have dynamic conversations with designers and creatives influencing fashion. This show was inspired by our book, Fashion and Color, Volume 1, that serves to preserve the history of black designers A to Z. Let's get into the show. I am so thrilled to be here with Nicole Benefield today for many reasons. <laughs> um, one, Nicole, we actually showed her collection in 2022. We also showed her collection this year with HFR. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a collaboration in store right now with Nicole Benefield um, at Abercrombie & Fitch, which by the way, we're both, we're both wearing. wearing. So we're both <laughs> modeling for the collection yes. today. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I really I'm appreciate so this. First of all, <laughs> let's start with the collab. How okay. are you feeling about everything? Amazing. Still on a high. <laughs> like literally, like still on a high. Well, like I look back on the images and it's like, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> <laughs> what, it, what was the process like for you with that collaboration? It was really natural. You know, I didn't know what to expect going into it, you know, when I was asked to be a part of it. And when I got to meet the team, it just felt so like the synergy was just um, like it was meant to be, you know. And the pieces are so Thank you. good. Like Thank people you. can't see this top, but there is a... Um, let's see, do I have it unbuttoned? It's let's like see. an Can open I show? vent. <laughs> it's like an open vent yes. in the back, yes. with like buttons that go all the way down that gives you like a little bit of sexy mm -hmm. in the back. Yeah, yeah, and you can keep the vent closed and have the sleeve have open. So, yeah, you have yeah, it open. Yeah, have it open. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. open it up. Yeah. Um, it's just all these like little details. Yeah, I was really like mindful to make sure that those details cut through yep. just to make sure that it had a differentiation from what they're already doing so and then this was your first time doing menswear yes yes what was that like amazing <laughs> you know in my junior year um a, you get to have a fashion show at the end of the year yep. your junior year and your senior year and i did menswear wow. and i liked it yeah yeah love, so it was really nice to do it again so we got something for the man yes we have something for the women mm -hmm. you can still check it out on abercrombie and fitch um, if you type in Nicole Benefield or HFR, mm -hmm. it both come thumbs up. up. Yeah. yeah. Except they're selling out fast. That's great. by the way. I'm so excited. <laughs> they're selling out an item. So let's hope that when this show airs, yes. uh, there's still product there yeah. for you to actually yes. shop. Mm -hmm. So let's start with I know you're from New York. Yes. You're from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. How did that play a role in just your creativity? Well, when I was growing up, we, me and my brother, latchkey kids, and um, he would always be outside. I'd play outside a little bit, but I really was a homebody. I mm. would stay indoors and play with Barbie, mm. believe it or not. I know um, I love that the Barbie movie came out yep. um, this summer. I definitely went to see it, but I was a diehard Barbie person. And mm. it wasn't so much about playing with the doll. It was having to dress her. Mm. I loved it. I would ask my mother, because um, we didn't have a lot of money, right? Dark Barbie would have her outfits. We I'd get the doll, but not the outfits. Mm -hmm. And I would literally ask my mom, is there anything you're throwing out, like clothes? So I was upcycling before it was a wow. thing. So I'd cut up my mom's old shirts and for hours just make clothes. I still have some, and one of them, one of the things that I made when I was that age is on my vision board. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, I had to be around we six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. I was, had to be about six or seven when I made it. It was wow. really cool. It was like a hoodie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's like a little <laughs> hoodie with the pockets. Okay. We, and my logo. We, ha we have to get yes. that over to the bar. Yes. Please. It's so cute. Uh, so they can see that. So, yeah. That's so I was always into, I guess, casual clothing. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we talked about a bit, like, you've got like an artistic family. Yes. Talk yes. Talk about that. Yes. So my dad, um, he was always into I guess fine arts um, chalk drawings and pencil drawings faces portraits yep. and he'd always like um, reminisce about his time in high school and how whenever they would need flyers done or any promotions done they'd ask him mm -hmm. and he really you know I love when he talks about those days but he never ex like explored it right so um, my mom you know she was also a huge um, fan and uh, helping me like follow my path to creativity 
and uh, got me into classes, art classes in the mm. summer for fashion. And when it came to for college, I kind of got a little nervous mm -hmm. because there was no one modeling what a fashion designer was for me. So when my dad was like, aren't you gonna be a fashion designer? Why aren't you applying to colleges for that? So when I got the go ahead from my parents, wow. I was like, okay, game on, I'm doing this. So that is such a different story, Yeah. right? Because most people, the story is, I really wanted to get into mm -hmm. something creative, yeah. but my parents were yes. pushing me to do something traditional. Opposite. And that was the opposite for yeah, you. Yeah, my, my family, my parents, you know, they don't mind taking risks. Not that they mm -hmm. did it for themselves, but they encouraged us to do that. Right. Yeah, so he was like, go ahead and do it. And wow. to this day, I get a little teary just thinking about yeah. it because again, we didn't come from money, but they were like, we'll figure it out. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I know that your brothers are also yeah. artistic as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my brother, Fredro Starr, is a rapper. <laughs> real, real, his real name is Fred Scruggs. In the group. And, yes, in the group Onyx. Which is major. Yes, yes. And, my, <laughs> and my cousin, Kirk, he's also a member of the group. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, and that's on my mom's side. So, um, yeah, we're artistic. <laughs> and both of your children. Yes, both artistic. Well, my son, more like in the environmental space. Okay. And my daughter is fine arts. Okay. Definitely not fashion. She hates it, right. um, but she loves drawing. She understands three-dimensional spaces, even um, technology-wise. She'll just go in and create a, a, a restaurant. She's right. like, look at this cool restaurant I created. And the thing is rotating around on the screen. Um, and my son, he loves clothing. Okay. Like anything he puts on, he just has this natural talent right. for merchandising himself. Right. And um, he, he loves seeing the whole process. and witnessing you know what i'm working on and right. yeah yeah how did they feel about the collaboration my son okay so they <laughs> shipped us a whole box first uh -huh. of all the box even said nicole benefield wow. yeah like i uh -huh. was like oh my god they even got boxes made so um he got some clothes as well and okay. he put it on and he came back into the into the living room. He's like, "You did good." Wow! So I was so just incredible. like, "That's all I needed. I needed." <laughs> the night, the night we did a launch event mm -hmm. with Abercrombie and Fitch, and I got a chance to meet your mom that yes, night. And yes, yes. There was some more of your family there too. Yes, I my sister like. was there, her husband, <laughs> and um, again, my daughter. She couldn't make it, but my son was there. His okay. friend was there, okay. and friends, just okay. like my my ride or dies were wow. there with me yeah so i know that you know this journey i'm sure hasn't been easy for no. you and that before you started your own line you worked for several of the brands yes. right mm -hmm. what are some of the brands that you worked well for? ann taylor i was there for 10 years working on the loft brand okay so i was there when it launched okay. so i you know i really when i think about my career i think that is the bulk of my career and yeah. where i um kind of cut my teeth so, yeah. so to speak Prior to that, I was at The Limited. Okay. And then after Ann Taylor, I freelanced at Banana Republic with okay. Kohl's for Elizabeth and James. So always these like big um, retailers, yep. and women's retailers with big design teams. Mm. Design teams where you could get lost on right. those teams, right? But um, yeah, just the people that I've worked with along the way have been just really incredible. But as my career progressed, the opportunities got less and less you know, mm. you kind of age out of the, the industry. Mm. And I had found that I had to pivot. I mm. had to pivot. My, my kids were getting older. I needed some stability. I love the freelance, mm -hmm. but I needed something steady. So um, I thought about what are my transferable skills? Right. So I went um, and applied. I saw a position open at FIT. Yep for a full-time professor yep. position, applied and got the job. That's incredible. And so, um, and I've always done mentorship mm -hmm. throughout my whole life. Um, I was part of a mentorship program called Footsteps to Follow, which mm -hmm. puts black professionals in front of black young people yep. and talk about what careers we have and how we got to where we were going. So it was just sort of parlaying right into teaching. I love, I, I mean, I want to come to one of your classes. I'm sure it's incredible. It is good. But I want to go back. So you said that a lot of times, like, 
is it designers period? Does yes. it feel like it's black designers that get to a certain place on the corporate side mm -hmm. and there's like this yes. Yes. feeling that's there? There is. Can you expand on that? Yes. So um, there, okay, here's a perfect example. Um, I always did casual separates in my career. Mm -hmm. So denim, washed products, and and those categories always came in at a lower price point, so the customer connected to that. Mm -hmm. So my departments would always overperform. You get okay. great bonuses, and um, you know, um, it was just really nice to always go in a meeting and things were selling well. Right. right? Then there was at one point, um, I think I'd been there maybe five years, so. Um, promotion, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I've done all this. I've proven that so you were there for five years, no promotion, no promotion. Okay. Yeah. I came in as designer was at the, no, I got promoted to senior designer, but okay. sort of just plateaued. And, okay. um, there was one, um, uh, we call it review time where, you know, uh, you either get your, your salary increase, you, uh, you know, where, you, where your bonus yep. structure is, you know, if you're going to get the promotion and everybody was like, Nicole, you're going to get the promotion this year. It's going to happen this what year. What would the promotion have been? It would have been to design director. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, went in the office, had my review, came out, no promotion. But what I was told in my review was, look, we are, we only had a certain number of spots to give that promotion to. It didn't go to you, but just know you're going to still make the same money. Isn't that all that matters? Mm. So that was hard, you know, to leave that office, look at my team who mm. were not black, right, <laughs> but right. supported me and were like, are you serious? My cross-functional team members coming to me like you got robbed. Mm. So after that, I just had this this thing in the back of my head, like mm. I might I'm not good enough. You know, mm -hmm. then you start to realize why, you know, is it because I'm black? You know, mm. because I have to say throughout my whole career, I never thought about my blackness. Mm. I would go into spaces and just be oblivious like right. that. I'm the only one sitting there right. or one of two, you right. know, out of a team of 30, mm -hmm. you know, so it just because I guess I always less had it. One, what, less than one percent. Yes, 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 always yes. was the case. That would be, yeah. Yeah, and just blind to it until yeah. it affects you. Right. And then right. you're like, okay, wake up call, you know? So I, that's when I knew that whatever I did, I, have, I had to do it so much better. I started mm -hmm. interviewing and looking for the next role where I could elevate. Because a lot of times in corporate, if you stay too long, right. you don't, grow right. right you almost have right. to leave in order to get to the next level right. which is what i did right um, i went to another startup um and it ended up not succeeding but i ended up working with the most amazing people mm -hmm. that were going to just push me and give me the um like the mentorship that i never right. got right mm -hmm. and um so some things happen for a reason right. and even when i moved to fit i still had that what's next? Am I still good enough? Mm. And I had a conversation with a friend because a couple, a couple of months in, um, I thought about, you know, is this the end game for me? Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it and she said, this is not your end game, Nicole. Wow. <laughs> she said, this is not your end game. She said, you need to write down chic future. Mm. So I, I got a big Sharpie, wrote it on this paper, stuck it on a board. And then we went to, I, then I was like, okay, you're right. I can do this. I said, I can teach. I have two days off a week, the weekends, the, well, the whole month of December off, all of summer off. What are you going to do with that time? Right. right. Don't be idle. So I thought in my head, I'll just bang out a fly portfolio, right. <laughs> make some stuff of my own. I've never made my own collection. I've always designed for other people, mm. but I never did it for myself. Mm. So I said, what would that look like? So I started just sketching, throwing sketches up on the board, going to the fabric stores, making patterns just in it. Right. 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 I hadn't done that since school and it felt good. I'm working with these students. They're doing it. Well, I can do it too. Right. They make everything look so easy, young right. people. Right. <laughs> so I started doing it and um, and actually it helped me teach as well, because now I'm physically doing the work that they're 
ask, being asked to do. Right. You know, before I started doing the line, I would put so much pressure on them, like, why isn't that done? You know, mm -hmm. as if I'm the only class they have. But then I realized that takes time making a pattern, mm -hmm. thinking about those details, cutting the fabric, sewing it, understanding what, how you're going to engineer the inside and how does it affect the outside. All of those things take time. So, um, midway, I was going to be like a five piece collection that I could just merchandise, right? Yep. And maybe make 10 looks out of right. it, right? Kind of how I approached the Abercrombie project. And uh, then COVID happened. Mm. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to keep going. Wow. <laughs> Kept sewing. Yep. And a friend of mine was trolling LinkedIn. And she's like, Nicole, I found this post from this company called Resonance, and they're looking for 10 black creators. Mm. Um, you don't have to have a business. They just need, um, a, like, what would your line be and what would your point of view be? And they have this criteria you need to create, um, do answer these questions, create a video right. and all this stuff. So literally moved all the furniture out of my living room, right. turned it into this makeshift studio and made this video. Me and my daughter um, concepted this cool idea of um, working in a digital space okay. and because we knew it was a technology platform right, right. and how we would imagine working on avatars like in Clothe 3D. Mm. We had just taken a Clothe 3D class virtually. Um, I got um, uh, FIT offered a workshop for okay. it. So me and my daughter <laughs> were sitting there yeah. learning how to do Clo. So we created a, a garment in Clo, put that in the video presentation. A um, couple, like a month later, I got a phone call, you're in. Wow. <laughs> and boom, there you go. Didn't plan it, just was working, was doing the work, didn't right. know where it was leading. It was, I thought, it was, this would be fun. Right. And then they're like, yeah, you need to form an LLC and you need to like get a Shopify because you're making these clothes and you have to now sell it. Right. So here I am becoming a business person and legit like three months earlier was just messing around just cutting clothes and thinking i'm just going to do a photo shoot to get a portfolio to get a job <laughs> a lot has happened in three years yes yes a mm -hmm. lot a lot yes. i remember um allison yes. again from my team mm -hmm. sent me your information and she mm -hmm. must have met you through resonance because she was working there she did but i never met her through resonance oh, yeah really? she was one of the on the i guess the board there right, right. Um, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't work with her there. We have a mutual. We have a few mutual friends. Okay. Yes, okay. and that's how I finally got to meet Allison. Yeah. Well, she she sent me over your information yes. too, mm -hmm. and I was like, she is so dope. Like all oh, of your collection, you. there was this very clear point of view. That had a it, very clear aesthetic. That's what I really brain. try hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, I want to go back to your time at Parsons. Mm -hmm. How did, do you think that time at Parsons, which is one of the best mm. fashion design schools yes. in the world. And it was better back then. Wow. Imagine that. <laughs> how, how has that impacted you even today? Honestly, I still talk about my days at Parsons. I loved it. Loved wow. every bit of it. I mean, there was FIT and I had taken summer classes at FIT, but um, the way Parsons wooed me was my art teacher. I didn't know about Parsons mm -hmm. until my, my art teacher in high school um, found out that I was interested in fashion. She told me about the program at Parsons. Right. And what Parsons would do was they'd have their senior fashion show mm -hmm. and they would invite potential um, students for the following year mm -hmm. to their fashion show for the rehearsal show. My mom that's and I went, right? It's like, mm hmm That's such bait. a good strategy. Just that right. bait. Yes. They did that show. <laughs> and can I tell you, wow. My mother's like, oh, this is it. You're going here. Wow. Uh -huh. So that's how I ended up going to Parsons. Yeah. And That's incredible. Yeah. And um, just the experience there was amazing. They have an amazing foundation year. Mm. which I think is essential for any art program. Your first year, you don't go into your major. Mm. Your first year, you're just exploring. You're, you're doing three-dimensional design with clay, um, sculpting, live model drawing, um, color theories, art history, all of that. So how to you know create forms out of foam core or a mat knife and how mm. to score things and how to work with tools, tools right, of the right, trade, of right, any trade. Right. So I was in school in, in classes with architect majors and mm -hmm. fine art majors. So you get to see all these different spaces, right? 
And that's what my daughter's doing now. And she's showing me her projects. And I'm like, I remember when I had to do that. But I really do think that any artist, if you're trying to learn something, it's great to explore all art mediums. Right. And because it does inform your aesthetic and how you approach design. Absolutely. So um, I still i am very fond of that because I've applied it into so many things, um, whether it be in my home. Right. I don't know how to engineer it, how to, you know, how to make something it from a one dimensional sketch and turn it into a three dimensional mm -hmm. something, right? And so when I went into the fashion design program, when we had to learn how to make patterns, you understand right. the human shape and how to make a garment, how to make fabric come around that human shape. And you need darts that right. then turn, you know, where um, some programs don't have that. And you can see the struggle mm -hmm. with some students that maybe didn't have that foundation um, to learn how to understand three-dimensional structures. That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, it probably makes for just a better dis dynamic yes. design process. Yes. Curious, yes. right? Yes. When you were in the HFR show mm -hmm. in 2022, mm -hmm. what were your expectations and what came out of that event for you? First of all, when I got the call, okay, because I'm also an interim member of the CFDA. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Which, okay. okay. Yes. That's a whole story. I mean, that's a, that's, okay, let's just take a moment. Yes. For that. <laughs> uh, the CFDA, mm -hmm. which is the Council of Fashion Designers of America, yes. is one of the most powerful fashion organizations mm -hmm. in the world. Yes. And for the US, it is the mm -hmm. most powerful organization mm -hmm. in the world. Yes. And the fact that you are an interim member yes. is a huge deal. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Don't know how it happened. All I know is that there was an email in my junk mail that I stumbled on that yeah. was a month old. Right. That was an invitation. <laughs> I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> I better right. get back in touch with these right. people. Right. right. So that's how that happened. I don't know how it was nominated, whose radar I was on. All I know is that. I got an invitation and I was so grateful for yeah. the opportunity. But um, they were putting together a program mm -hmm. for the interim members to get exposure. It ended up not falling through, but I was hustling to get ready yeah. for this thing. And um, when it didn't fall through, I'm like, oh, well, at least I have this fabulous line, you know, and I'll just get the website right. ready and get ready to launch it. And boom, that's when I got a text from my friend saying, Allison from Harlem's Fashion Row is going to be reaching out to you. I told her about you. And there you go. So, wow. yeah, that's how that happened. So, and, and what we love to do is to not just show a designer's collection one season, but mm -hmm. we like to show two seasons yeah. because we want <clears throat> our audience, we want retailers to mm -hmm. be able to see kind of the evolution yeah. of a designer from like season to season. Mm -hmm. And so you showed in September, 2022. Yes. Yes. And then you showed again mm -hmm. in September yeah. 2023. Yeah. And I remember you telling me that like you really kind of let yourself go. Yeah, it was a different process the second what time was that around. Process? So the the second the first time around, um, I had I remember it was like, you need 16 looks. How many do you have? I'm like, eight. Like, well, can you get to 16 in three weeks? I'm like, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so literally took the eight looks, the eight looks that I had. And just if you really study the the collection, repeat it in new colors and maybe change the proportion. Right. That was the first show. Right. The second show, I just knew that I had this this idea to almost create like a jumpsuit look, like what you're wearing, what I that's like my jam, this right. head to toe dressing thing. So I really wanted to um make sure that that was cutting through. Mm. So I literally put one the look in. Then I would pick it up from the woman that was sewing for me, and it would be amazing. I'm like, oh, my God, this looks so good. <laughs> uh -huh. So, and then just kept building it. As one style would come, just put the next one in wow. and literally just built it that way. Yeah, wow. yeah. A lot of um, sketching, because sketching is a lot cheaper than make cutting some fabric, yes. and then yeah. you end up not liking it. Yeah. So just kept sketching those as the rack 
kept, kept growing, just like, okay, what's missing? What's missing? I need this. So almost looking at it three dimensionally, like right. in, in real time, right. rather than all illustration and then go, right? Wow. Which is how different it was. Which is so dope because you get a chance to take one piece, get so excited yeah. and inspired it, by your own work. Exactly. Actually. That's exactly what was happening. Right? And then you get the build that was that exactly what was happening. And yes. you know what? I feel like I came to see you a few weeks before the show and you, you were did. just like, yes. I feel like there's something missing. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. You're still creating. And you're I'm like, still creating. Yes, I yes. am still creating. Yes. Half the stuff you saw on the runway, you did not see. Right. Like, legit was just kind. Right. Yeah. And I swear the best ideas happen towards right before the show. I feel like that always yeah. happens. Yeah. Like the silver look. I was yes. like, I, I don't know. I just loved how the silver cut in next to the neutrals. Right. And we had the pant in, and I was like, well, what's the top? Because I'm doing right. this head-to-toe thing. And we just riffed off of one of the other tops in the show. And I was like, watch that get the attention. And lo and behold, it is. <laughs> and the styling on it was... Thank you. I remember I Thank talked you. to Clarence Ruth. Yeah. And he was just like, Aww. that Nicole Benefield? <laughs> I said, I know. It's because I illustrate. It's so funny. When I illustrate, it's like I am a stylist. Mm. I can't dress myself that way. I legit almost have to sketch it first and wow. then do it. I'm not the type to throw things on and experiment. I almost see it in on the sketch first. Mm. Like, I know I want that shoe and the sock to hit there and the, you know, right. and that's how my, my process works. That's so yeah, cool. yeah, but I, I'm glad he said that because I tried hard to like really elevate it, yeah. you know, and just maintain a, a, a point of view. Absolutely. And um, keep it elevated like what you would see in any runway brand from Paris, you know? So. You, you did you did an incredible job. Um, Thank that you. That collection from the show, you guys should absolutely <laughs> go and check that out, please, because Thank Thank the you. collection is yeah. just, yeah. It's, it's stunning, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. What's next for you? What's next? Um, well, after the Abercrombie thing, I was like, oh gosh, I learned so much from that process. Wow. I, I want to, approach how I work as well based off what I learned from what were some doing of the things that, that you learned a, a lot of it's going back to what I know right mm -hmm. I feel there's two sides of me there's mm -hmm. the sophisticated side and there's the, there's the Nicole on the weekend slash everyday side and that you know I, I embrace the sophisticated side but I feel like people that shop the brand that want the brand always go to the casual side so right. that's my jam that's right. my finding what my pocket is mm -hmm. right um and i feel like doing the abercrombie collab i realized this is my pocket you mm -hmm. know these cool wide leg pants um super like with a casual element to it whether it be a zipper a cargo pocket or something right right but in sophisticated fabrics styled in a sophisticated way like i always have the shoot in mind like what's the end product going to be mm -hmm. and that's what's next for me in terms of um point of view for the right. brand and then um i'm still in like a made to order like i've been going back and forth between made to order made you know on demand which means i can shoot it one week and be on the site the yep. next and have everything lined up and ready to go or wholesale so mm -hmm. i've been trying to i dabbled in wholesale mm -hmm. it's been a little unsteady um but trying to toggle both right for the business so just connecting with partners right now mm -hmm. to help me figure out what that is because I've just been going fast and furious for like the last two and a half years yeah. so this you know having doing the show working with Abercrombie literally last weekend I said just will you sit down for a minute right. just sit down right. for a minute right, right? right. let's do like a, a, a history lesson on Nicole yes. Benefield and laid out every collection what worked what didn't work what to move forward with what mm -hmm. are those things you're going to run with like for the next season mm -hmm. just be smart my yeah. tagline is work smarter not harder right. <laughs> you know so yeah what do you want women to feel or men when mm -hmm. they wear your collection i i want them to feel comfortable right mm -hmm. i i am at that phase now in my life where i i just can't also be dope when i enter the room i have to feel good in my right. in the clothes right mm -hmm. um and just feel like it's a piece that is 
not only an investment, but something that you'll wear all the time, mm -hmm. right? You ever hear like when people buy the fine china, they only bring it out for yeah. special occasions. Yeah. Like I want you to wear it all right. the time right. and love it and right. wear the mess out of it, right. you know? That's the goal, right? That your cape, which I talk about, yes. cape all the time. I got a new one coming for you. I, what it's, color is it? The olive green. It's like a, like I need a, it. Like a, it's I, coming. I need, yeah, like, it should be here in three weeks. <laughs> the cape that I have, it's, it's this gray cape. It's got this like exaggerated mm -hmm. collar, yes, right? That yes, goes up. Yes. You can wear it open mm -hmm. or you can wear it like yes, wrap the uh -huh, belt around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I told you, like, mm -hmm. I wore that in Paris. Yeah. Um, I went last year for LVMH's mm -hmm. um, Le Journey Particularis. Yes. And people were stopping me, like, like yes. who are you? Like, what is this? And it was raining, and so it was like, it makes me feel so good. Outfit, yeah, it way. was. I remember because you had a baseball cap in Paris. Well, I wore that to yeah. a, a meeting. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But in Paris, I wore it. It was raining too, mm -hmm. and it's just—it's like one of those looks that I can wear with like a pair of like Docs or a yeah, pair of like exactly. sneakers and still look really, high really low. cheap. Yep, high low. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in love yeah. with your kit. Yeah. And when we're getting ready for the show, I see your collections, mm -hmm. and I do a whole collection review, and our team does a collection review. Mm -hmm. But honestly, there's so much going on at that time. So yeah. I feel like I need to go back yeah. and look at your collection again yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like just like individually. Yeah, mm -hmm. just like really Deep look dive. at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Congratulations to Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. On everything. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Like seriously. You, you're you an angel. Serious. You're like the fairy godmother of black design goodness. Seriously. Oh, you know? Yeah. Well. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to attempt to make up that. Uh, you know, no, for us, for us, it really is an honor. It's like, how do we open doors for yeah. designers who actually deserve it? And mm -hmm. then for the next generation. Yes. That's coming like way behind mm -hmm. all of us. Yeah. And we're fortunate to have really great brand partners, mm -hmm. you know, like the Abercrombie yeah. collab, like everything about that. Their team was amazing. Amazing. Um, they had nothing but incredible. Like, they love you Aww. so much. <laughs> um, and so it was just, we have really great partners. Yeah. And because we have really great partners, it makes it easy for us to do what we do as right. well. Yeah. Um, and the last thing I'll say is I Nicole know. is featured in the book. Yes. Hold on, let's see if I can find her page. <laughs> Let me see if I can find Nicole. Can I just tell you, book. this experience in the book was so incredible in the Macy's windows that we, oh, when the yes. book launched, right? Yeah, that was really amazing. We launched yeah. the book. Um, for those of you who don't know, we mm -hmm. launched the book in the windows of Macy's. Yes, during Black History and Month. During Black yeah. History mm -hmm. Month and Macy's. Um, do you know your page, Nicole? I'm trying I to find. Don't, but it is you're close. It's somewhere I'm towards the front. Like, yeah. But um, we launched in the windows of Macy's, which was so major. Yeah. And they gave us five windows. Yes, yes. Actually, I did Macy's not expect did. that. Macy's yeah. gave us five windows. There it is. Cold. <laughs> yes. There it is. <laughs> Let's see if we can get the glare out. Um, but Nicole was one of the designers that yeah. featured in the windows. Yes. And the collection looks so Thank you. Good Thank you. Thank you. And window. that was off the off the first runway show. Yes. So pieces and then oh just my God. updated the black, so that it the would white, pop. Right. The, it it yeah. just looks so good. Thank and you. um Thank you. Ashley, who is the artist for yeah, this. So Ashley good. Butterfield. I Butter got to meet is her. By. Yeah. I feel like she really captured. This was in the window and people were like, I saw your face in the window. Oh and that's an illustration. So that's how good it is. I mean, you know? it's a painting. Yes, actually, like, yes. This is mm -hmm. a really painting. Yes. Um, I actually have the originals at the office. Mm -hmm. We're doing an event um, coming up very soon with all the original paintings. Oh. So I'll make sure that you have that. But like there's yes. a QR code where you yeah. can actually go and shop from Nicole. Yeah, thank and some you. of the pieces. Um, yeah, that photo That poncho, that's what it's set here, it right? off. Isn't yeah, it's it? on the next Let's page. See. Yeah. It's. That poncho this, this, is oh is, here it is the cape. It's still this is the that's cape. the cape. That's this the cape is, you have. Yes. This is the cape. Yes, I'm having a full moment. This is the, the cape, cape. Yes. that like Yeah, yeah. Yeah, more. We're it's the cape it's coming. of all cape. More of that. And is the coming. poncho, yes, is yeah. absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um 
congratulations Thank to you, you Thank Nicole. You. We look forward yes. at HFR to doing just more things with you. You've been an absolute like Anytime. delight to work Anytime. with. Anytime. And yes. I'm excited to see your journey like Thank as you. you move forward. Mm -hmm. How can people find you? You can find me um, on uh, Nicole Benefield portfo underscore portfolio. Okay. Or email me info at NicoleBenefield.com. And your Instagram is? Yeah, Nicole Benefield Portfolio. Okay. And mm -hmm. your website? My website is Nicole Benefield Portfolio. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. This was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>